Welcome, I'm Nina Griffin, and this is the Astrology and Magic channel. Today we'll talk about the astrology of December 2023, the last month of the year. First off, I wanted to say thank you to all of my patrons. I appreciate all of your support. If you would like to become a patron, please go to patreon.com slash Nina Griffin, and you can get access to my astrological and magical content. At the highest tier, you can get access to the monthly ebook, Magical Elections, which tells you how and when each month to make uh, planetary and other celestial talismans. Compared to the eclipses in October, followed by nothing but hard aspects in November, December is astrologically a lot milder, with more harmonious aspects to balance out the tougher ones. This means that we have lots of opportunities to build things and to get cooperation from others. Humans are social creatures. Individually, we're weak. We have no fangs or claws or protective scales but we can rely on each other to survive and accomplish anything. That spirit of collaboration has been lacking in the last couple of months because of the difficult astrology, but December brings a number of chances to reach agreement and create something greater than ourselves for the benefit of all. Now, since December is the last month of the year before we enter the new world of 2024, I can tell you that next year promises to be an intense, exciting, and transformative year one that takes us right up to the edge of the new era promised by Saturn conjoining Neptune in 25 and 26. The big global changes that are promised in the second half of this decade will now start to emerge, and we'll watch for these first omens together in 2024 so we can see what's ahead for all of us in the following years. Now let's talk about December. Week 1, December 1st, Mercury enters Capricorn. He leaves the sign of his detriment and enters more neutral territory. He's peregrine throughout much of Capricorn, so he's not very strong, and he's very much at the mercy of the sign ruler, Saturn. Their relationship is harmonious during much of this month as Saturn is in Pisces, and they'll form a sextile aspect the very next day, December 2nd. After the disorder and chaos of October and November, Mercury works to impose some structure on things, to create order, to put some on that unbounded activity that we've seen. December 2nd, we'll have Mercury sextiling Saturn in Pisces, and that's going to reinforce that theme. December 4th, Venus will enter Scorpio, which is a big drop in dignity for Venus, who leaves her domicile Libra for the sign of her detriment, Scorpio. As she passes through Scorpio, she will translate the light between the two of them. As she passes through Scorpio, she will translate the light between, you guessed it, Jupiter and Uranus by opposition, recreating Jupiter and Uranus's conjunction. Now, Jupiter and Uranus were getting their light translated all over the place in October and November. So we're getting kind of a preview of that aspect that will happen next year. Venus represents peace and harmony, and her opposition to Jupiter and Uranus right now suggests that peace is sought after now and it's proposed as a solution, but it's not necessarily granted or taken very well, since oppositions are about fundamental disagreements. So instead, the following day, December 5th, Venus at once Scorpio will trine Saturn in Pisces, and this is really Venus trying a different tack, achieving her goals through Saturn, who can be seen as a moderating and cooling intermediary in the explosive combination of Jupiter and Uranus. Recall that Saturn's in Pisces, which makes a friendly sextile to Jupiter and Uranus, so Saturn's friendly approach is going to be more successful than Venus's demand for peace. Remember, she's in a Mars sign, so she demands things. The successful move now, if you're trying to create peace, unity, and harmony, is to make a structure or vessel that can contain and shape the amorphous chaos of Jupiter and Uranus. Give these wild forces a container within which they can do their work and avoid harming their surroundings. December 7th, Mercury at 6 Capricorn will try and Jupiter retrograde in Taurus. Mercury with Jupiter can bring wisdom and skill to all that we do. It brings the potential balance between knowledge or techne, which are Mercury's domain, and spiritual experience or wisdom represented by Jupiter. Here's an opportunity to create something useful and meaningful, whether it's a creative work, a new method or system, or to pursue a new phase of personal or spiritual development. It can be a good time for movement in bureaucratic or legal matters, especially to make moves that need some adroit maneuvering. December 9th, Venus at 6 Scorpio opposes Jupiter retrograde in Taurus. Venus makes her first opposition this month, starting the translation of light mentioned a few minutes ago. This opposition can represent the conflict between pleasure and moderation, 
between what we want right now versus holding off. More broadly, though, Venus is trying to create some kind of workable relationship with the extreme Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, and the opposition suggests that this relationship is not going to happen with a direct approach. As mentioned previously, Venus will do better creating a third thing, a structure or container for this very dynamic Jupiter-Uranus energy. Trying to turn the extreme energies of Jupiter with Uranus directly into love and light is not going to work. Week 2 of December, December 11th, Venus at 8 Scorpio will sextile Mercury in Capricorn. This is the last of the four sextile aspects between Venus and Mercury this year. The prior three were May 12th, June 17th, and November 15th. The one on November 15th coincided with the U.S. House of Representatives one more time pushing the impossible discussion of the budget into January and February 2024, as I speculated would happen in last month's forecast. This time again, we have a brief window of finding harmony between parties that appear to be at odds. It's really a beautiful combination that can bring agreement in the midst of some very challenging conditions, so you may want to take advantage of it if you need to forge an agreement or alliance that's been elusive and hard to make. December 12th, we also get a new moon at 20 Sagittarius. The new moon conjoins Mars. It's a very fiery and violent new moon, suggesting that the next two weeks could see a resurgence or burst of uncontrolled energy or fighting. The new moon squares Neptune, creating potential for mass disaster of some kind. It's not a great lunation for the equities markets, which hate negative surprises. So sometimes we see a sharp drop in the month following these types of configurations in the new moon. There is some craftiness to all this violence though, something premeditated and not just a pure expression of rage. The new moon conjoins clever Mercury at 8 degrees Capricorn by Antitian. Similarly, December 12th, Mercury is stationing retrograde at 8 degrees Capricorn, so he's already stationary in this lunation. Mercury will enter his last retrograde phase of 2023, all of which started in the Earth element. During his journey, Mercury will retrograde into Sagittarius, losing dignity as he applies to a conjunction with the Sun. Mercury retrograde brings the opportunity for a different way of thinking, second chances, relearning or revisiting something. Sometimes he can just be an inconvenience intended to teach us a lesson about patience and or attention to detail. This is especially true when Mercury is retrograde in a sign of Saturn, the planet of lessons. Week 3 of December, December 18th, Mercury retrograde at 5 Capricorn will trine Jupiter retrograde in Taurus. This echoes the Mercury-Jupiter trine of December 7th, but this time with both planets retrograde, not just Jupiter. This combination can create some unexpected and surprising developments, as retrograde planets often do. If you want to make a surprising move in a negotiation or some surprising legal maneuver, this is the time to try it. The results may be different from what you expect, but now is the moment to think originally and out of the box. December 20th, Venus at 19 Scorpio will oppose Uranus in Taurus. This is Venus's translation of light to Uranus from her opposition to Jupiter, December 9th. People may feel like imposing peace on others by insistence or even by force. Yes, that is a paradox, but it's not going to work. Uh, in fact, it may just inflame the situation and create more hostility. The way to go now is to work with Saturn, to create boundaries and limit the field of play. The goal is to control that seemingly uncontrollable situation indirectly by limiting the space in which it can operate. December 21st, Mercury retrograde at 2 Capricorn or sextile Saturn in Pisces. This repeats the aspect of December 2nd when Mercury was direct. Here we've got the chance to develop a clever structure or strategy on which to build. The structure that we began to develop around December 2nd now may need some initial testing or revamping true to the spirit of Mercury retrograde. So sit with it and patiently examine whatever you developed in early December to check how it works and whether it can be put into play. December 21st, the Sun will enter Capricorn, and this is the winter solstice, which is when the Sun enters zero degrees Capricorn, forecasting what will happen for the winter season the following three months. In this chart, the Sun trines the exalted Moon with Jupiter and sextiles Saturn in Pisces. That's on the plus side. On the minus side, this chart also has Mars and Mercury in Sagittarius square Neptune in Pisces. So in winter, we'll experience some disruption as indicated by Mars square Neptune. 
but the harmonious Sun Jupiter Saturn combination promises the opportunity to build something lasting out of all that's fallen apart. December 22nd, Mercury retrograde at zero Capricorn conjoins the Sun. This is the inferior conjunction of Mercury and the Sun, and it happens right as the Sun inaugurates the winter season in the northern hemisphere. We now have an opportunity to celebrate the return of the Sun as well as Mercury's renewal in the solar furnace. We now have a chance to clear our minds and clear the decks for a new phase of planning. December 22nd, Mercury retrograde will re-enter Sagittarius, and Mercury will now apply to conjoin Mars, creating a combustible and very loud combination. Sagittarius is one of the loud-voiced signs, so with Mercury and Mars there, we have someone unafraid to speak truth to power, or really, just speak their mind at all. Mercury loses dignity in this move, he goes into the sign of his detriment, and with an application to a malefic, he's now going to be at the mercy of Jupiter, the ruler of Sagittarius. I wonder if some of Mercury's loud-voiced statements now are designed to serve the aims of raising funds and getting positive attention from the wealthy, Jupiterian kinds of goals, as much as speaking the truth. Week 4, December 25th, Venus at 25 Scorpio trines Neptune in Pisces. It is a dreamy combination on an individual level, but when it's close to a difficult transit, like the upcoming Mars square Neptune, it can indicate a lack of focus that leads to disasters, accidents, or bad decisions. The last time Venus trine Neptune was June 2nd, when there was a massive train wreck in India involving multiple trains and hundreds of people perished. So that kind of mass misfortune is possible with Neptune involvement because of his way of creating uh, inattention and deception. December 26th, we get the full moon at four Cancer, and this full moon is relatively free of drama. It doesn't make hard aspects to any planets, just a trine to Saturn and a sextile to Jupiter. This is likely to be a more calming lunation than the new moon of December 12th, giving us a chance to rebuild after all that aggression and senseless destruction. With the involvement of Jupiter and Saturn, it suggests the most powerful and basic forces are moving and shaping our world. They're going to be coming into alignment and harmony with each other. Mars squares Neptune, and this lunation will bring some kind of shock or drama that will have to be dealt with, but Jupiter and Saturn offer the chance to create something better from the ashes. Bad things do happen all the time, but as long as there are good aspects present, we can work with those misfortunes and turn them into something positive. December 26th, Mercury retrograde at 25 Sagittarius will square Neptune. This could indicate some kind of financial drama involving a lack of accurate information, a financial panic of sorts. Mercury and Mars are now very close together and they collectively square Neptune, resulting in panic or other empowered certainty that results in mass fear. Mercury will act as an amplifier of the Mars-Neptune square coming on December 28th, when Mars at 25 Sagittarius will square Neptune in Pisces. This is one of the most powerful aspects this month because it involves Mars, one of the classical superior planets, aspecting an outer planet. This means that significant collective forces are in play. Sometimes we get disasters or events involving the sea. The last time we had this aspect was in mid-March this year, and here in Southern California, we had a big boat collision at this time where a number of people died. There were also a high number of boat disasters in the Mediterranean and elsewhere around this time. Also, and this may seem like a million years ago, but Silicon Valley Bank and other small banks failed the last time this aspect came around in 2023. So in the week or two prior to this aspect, there could be some similarly disturbing financial news that shocks the markets right around that time. There are often explosions and similar events as well. December 28th, Venus at 29 Scorpio sextiles Pluto in Capricorn. It's not the most dramatic aspect since it's a sextile, but it combines the attractiveness of Venus with the power of Pluto. The spotlight sometimes lands on powerful women, as that is the combination of femininity and power. This combination might also bring news about nuclear development and tests, as those are related to Pluto. December 29th, Venus will enter Sagittarius. We now have kind of a full house in Sagittarius. Mercury and Mars are there, and now so is Venus. It's an active combination of three planets, and whatever house in your chart is occupied by Sagittarius will be activated. There will be both debits and credits in that area of life, but it probably won't be boring. Venus in Sagittarius is bold and brassy, and even though she lacks major dignity in this sign, she is still impressive in the guise of an Amazonian warrior goddess. 
She brings an opportunity for discovery, and she's neither patient nor long-suffering in Sagittarius. She will want results. December 30th, Jupiter stations direct at 5 degrees Taurus. After four months of being retrograde, he is now direct, and we can enjoy his bounty more directly. Jupiter went retrograde in early September, which meant that his natural energy was diminished as he moved backwards. Retrograde, he may act in more hidden, indirect, or simply less effective ways, but as he goes direct, he once again assumes his natural power. So he will now express himself more openly and powerfully. He represents wealth, optimism, as well as the virtues of moderation and generosity. So all of these qualities are now more available than they have been for the last few months. All right, thanks for watching. My name is Nina Griffin, and this is the Astrology and Magic channel.